Nobody likes waiting. Well, unless we're talking about Diner Dash. <laughs> but does waiting for a video game to load have to be an annoying, troublesome nuisance? Well, no, but kind of. Let me explain what I mean. Back in the days of the Genesis NES, loading screens didn't pop up too much because cartridges were like the SSDs of the past. Reading information super fast, whack, woo, 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 hello, okay, okay, slow it down, dude. I mean, the time it takes from booting up your 64 to sliding down Princess Peach's slick ass secret slide was well under 30 seconds. But the downslide of continuing to use cartridges as gaming progressed was limited storage capacity compared to the wealth of space provided by a hot new trend called the Compact D. While CDs introduced boatloads of space for gun blades and other weeb shit to console gaming, they also introduced more loading screens. Namco, being the savvy son bitches that they be, thought it would be a genius idea to load a smaller game, Galaxian, for players to play while a much larger game, Ridge Racer, was loaded. This was a good idea, so good that in 1995, Namco filed patent US 571867530, which gave them ownership of the idea of loading a smaller auxiliary game for gamer girls to play while waiting for the main game to load. Thankfully, this patent expired in 2015, but that still means that 20 essential years of video game evolution has been held back by Namco's clutches, giving us loading screens that just say the title of the fucking game. Hey man, what game you play? It's Bloodborne! We've seen a lot of percentages, a lot of spinning logos, and if you're Uncharted for it, fuck it, let's do both of them. But this isn't to say that the past 20 so years has been bad for loading screens, actually, quite the opposite. I want to talk about the games that persevered, that found other ways to entertain, entrance, and affect the player. In typical Snake Boy fashion, I've separated my examples into a bunch of different categories, and if you don't like my choices, well, there's nothing I could do about that, and this will be a much needed personal lesson and acceptance for me. Let's get it. Although Namco's Tommy Two-Tone patent prevented Vidges from loading auxiliary games while loading the main game, developers got around this by loading just a small chunk of their main game to allow Game Boys to practice their hot moves while waiting. Both Bayonetta and its squeak will allow you to practice the many combos and hot moves that you'll need to master throughout the game while the next section loads, getting two birds stoned at once. I get to do the hot moves, the game gets to load the hot moves, everyone is happy d <laughs> hot moves. Rayman Origins did this in a gorgeous way by having you run and jump in the dark realm while the level loaded, being entertaining and looking damn good while doing so. It's also worth mentioning the skirmish modes provided by games like Overwatch and Rocket League that allow you to practice your hot moves while the game finds you a match online. This is also very smart and good. Let's hear it for video games, everybody. How can we keep the player entertained? Just give him some shit to read, man! This is a very common loading screen that I'm sure every pair of peepers that's peeped a screen have seen. This isn't to say that they're all bad, but some definitely don't try very hard. However, my favorite example in this overpopulated category is easily the loading screens of Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. While matching the aesthetic of the game with the VHS tracking and fuzzy TV, the tips displayed perfectly match the tone of the game and are 100% self-aware and hilarious. I fucking love this game. Another positive example in this category are the loading screens of recent Bethesda games, providing not only tips and lore tidbits, but also allowing you to fuck around with models of the game, leading into my next category. While they may not be full-blown auxiliary games to get around Namco's patent, some games still slipped in some basic but neat ways to entertain gamer girls during the load zone. Whether it's mashing buttons to dunk on Devil May Cry 3's loading screen's ass, or making fart and vomit noises while changing the pitch with the analog stick and crash tag team racing. <laughs> These nuggets are very much appreciated and unforgettable. This is the category for the developers that looked at loading screens and thought, you know what? This would be a great time to touch on what's happened, what could and will happen, and the emotions associated with all of that. 
Whether it's the animated cinematics that unfold some story goodies in The Witcher 3, or the progressively surreal and questionable tips seen toward the end of Spec Ops The Line, this is the shit that gets the brain wheels all lubed up and swirling around in the noggin. One of my favorite examples are the audio memories that play during the loading screens of Shadow of Mordor, with the highlight being an emotional song sung by the main character Talion, voiced by Troy Baker's talented ass, that touches on the loss of his family. May your spirit find peace and show And to wife and son and king May those banks bring bliss with you May their sacrifice be a beacon to us all These are the screens that don't provide you with any gamer tips or try to entertain you with a goof, but instead just look real nice and pretty. While watching my buddy Cameron play XCOM 2, I was blown away by the art displayed during some of the many loading screens, taking the style of retro propaganda posters with a fitting fuzzy ass aesthetic to match. That shit is so gorgeous. Or the signature atmospheric screens of the Halo games, mesmerizing wiener dudes and gamer girls worldwide while they waited for the violence to begin. But my favorite favorite example of presentation, one that I briefly touched on in my title screen video, is the intro loading screen for Grand Theft Auto 4. Specifically the console version, the first time I booted up this game after years of anticipation and heard that theme song and saw that signature artwork of Steven Bliss, man, I was floored. I don't know if anything will ever match the level of excitement young Jakey felt while secretly playing Grand Theft Auto 4 for the first time in the dead of night. Sorry mom and dad, but I've always been a bad boy. As loading screens became more and more common on console discs and PC HDDs, an animosity towards them was definitely common. So much, in fact, that a game's whole marketing campaign was that there weren't any loading screens? What? Well, actually, there were. The loading was just hidden pretty well. For the most part, Tony Hawk's American Wasteland actually stuck to its promise, providing a pretty seamless journey from area to area in Tony's wacky world. The fact that you could carry a combo from one level to another is pretty damn cool, even if it meant going through a simple corridor while doing so. Another pretty good example of disguising loading screens, although a little more obvious, is all the quick time shit in Naughty Dog's recent games. Yeah, mashing triangle for the 420th time isn't super fun, but getting to listen to Joel and Ellie's banter while the game preps some more horrific and scarring things for you to experience isn't the worst deal. I wanted to include a last, final, sneaky little secret treat category just to touch on what are my favorite loading screens in video games. The Resident Evil series has had the signature door opening screens since day one, and they have always been a key part of exploration in that game. The door screens serve more purpose than just a curtain for the game to load behind. They keep the tension of exploring the unknown, adding to the suspense of not knowing exactly what's on the other side, playing with your expectations, especially that jump scare in Resident Evil 2. God dang shit, dude, I nearly pissed and I wasn't even playing. They also help you remember where you're headed, with you associating the different doors to what lies ahead. And there is nothing more rewarding than anticipating the absolute worst and being rewarded with the absolute best, most comforting thing in the world. Love you, toys. Well, kids, that's all I got. I hope this video was at least a little bit insightful on the topic of loading screens and Thanks for watching it to the very end. I, I, I appreciate it. Quick shout outs to Ballin' Monkey 12, aka Ball So Hard Monkey Fuckers Wanna Find Me, Spicy Evan, and Austin Story for their very generous contributions to Hot Boy Nation. Thank you very much, dudes. If you'd also like to support my channel, you can head on over to Patreon to do so, or just leave me a like on the video so that some numbers on the internet can make me feel better about myself. Some of my music is on Spotify and all that other digital streaming shit now. Buy some t-shirts, yell at me on Twitter, look at my nudes on Instagram, send me nudes on Snapchat, here's some music I'm working on. <laughs>